Are you looking for a really great, interesting adventure to bring new players into Starfinder? Well, let me tell you about Dawn of Flames coming up. Hi Game Masters and welcome back to Second Rate DMs. My name is Scott and this here is our channel that talks about reviews, GM tips, and all kinds of useful things out there for Game Masters such as yourself. We've been lucky as of late to be able to get some products from Paizo and one of the things that they've sent to us is this brand new adventure path for the Starfinder game. And what it is, it is it's called Dawn of Flame and it's a, one of a six part series that honestly, this is the first time that our players have really sat down and played Starfinder and it's been a really good introduction to the system. So I'm gonna go through it and we're gonna talk about some non-spoilery stuff. If I do mention anything that is spoilers, I'll go back through and I'll edit it and I'll put a big spoiler banner on the top or something like that, but I'm gonna try my best to avoid those. So let's talk about the good things that this game has going for it. So first of all, if you're not familiar with Starfinder, Starfinder is uh, Paizo's answer to the sci-fi fantasy world and you can actually check out a review for that either over there or over there or whichever one it is, but you can check it out. We just did a review on it not too long ago. But this adventure path is um, from one to, I wanna say 18, and it's in a, broken into six different parts. And the entire thing, the entire story is called Dawn of Flame. And if you're not familiar with how Paizo does their products, typically these adventure paths are stories within each of the books and then there's a long book or a long story of uh, an overarching story that goes along with it. So if you're more familiar with Wizards products, they tend to give you like a book or like three really thick books that encompass a story. These are much easier and smaller to digest. So as someone who's generally not a fan of uh, pre-written adventures, I mean, to be completely honest, I really enjoyed this one. And the reason and my typical complaints for these kinds of things is I'm an improv player or an improv, improv GM, uh, Game Master. And so I like to make up my own stories and do my own things. And typically I find these very difficult to follow anyway. And one of the best things that I found in this one is that everything that the GM is supposed to be saying is in red. So it's like, hey, that's important. That's what I need to be reading to the players. Or things are bolded or they're highlighted and there are ways to bring the attention to the Game Master while you're playing the game. So typically when it comes to these kinds of things, the amount of time that is spent in an adventure path, usually in a module is reading it, rereading it, taking notes, highlighting stuff, blah, 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 super boring. I spent one read through with this, realized that I didn't need to do any more read throughs and sat there and ran it at the table. It was very GM friendly. Basically the things that I really needed to learn were the background of the of the adventure. And what it did is actually the beginning of the adventure path that gave me um, what each book, each of the, the adventures themselves, the one, the six different adventures, how they're going to be broken out and what story is involved in each one of those. And so Dawn of Flame, and I'm not spoiling anything here because it's on the back of the book, uh, essentially opens up with this far portal station that's near the sun and it's been sitting there for centuries and nothing's ever come out of it and most all expeditions that have gone in have never returned. And so it starts off with some things coming out of this portal and, you know, it's really quick paced, but then it, you know, that portal gets yanked back and there's these psychic bursts that are all over the place and the, uh, the archipelago that exists within the sun, um, this is where this whole adventure takes place. So if your players have been interested in that area, this gives a lot of lore and a lot of items and, you know, different species and things that exist within that sun and that whole interesting area that, that is within there. There's not a whole lot of games where you get to explore a star uh, or a sun in this case that you know we can actually go in, explore it, and do some kinds of interesting things. So SOD is proud to announce our brand new sponsor, Scabbard RPG Campaign Manager. And it's exactly that. You can go there and keep track of all of your NPCs, your items, your maps, all of these things that you and your players can both access. If that's something that you need to do to kind of keep things in order, I know I do, I've been using it for years, you can find it down in the link below. If you decide that you like the premium features that are there, if you use our link within the first three hours, you get a 20% discount. Thanks. So again, I'm not going to, to spoil anything, but you know, it was a really captivating adventure. I really enjoyed putting together this game 
and following it through step by step. This did give me enough freedom as a game master to kind of create or tweak my own NPCs that are in the, in the different various stations and locations, as well as some improv. So the system itself, not the system, but the, the book itself was very easy for new game masters. So this one immediately gives the players the ability to create their own characters, create their own starship, kind of teach them those rules, and then it jumps right into some role play and then some starship combat, and then some combat and exploration really early. I mean, it gives it a really good overview of, of what it, there is to expect in Starfinder. Dawn of Flame is levels one through three, so that really helps out that, that uh, low level kind of grind to get them used to the system on top of the story itself. And so far, they've been enjoying it. Well, I can't wait for the next one. Now onto some of the more nitpicky things um, about this thing that I didn't necessarily like or that I wish they would improve upon. So one of the first things that you'll notice as you're reading through that it, it will talk about um, sources from the Starfinder Armory or the, the Pact Worlds book. And I don't own the Starfinder Armory yet. So this was a kind of a concern for me. Um, it's actually, I want to say, one of the few first treasures that the party finds. It talks about, you know, it's this uh, radiation scanner that is in the Starfinder Armory. I didn't have that. However, um, after digging through a little bit further, there is a, you can go to the SRD, um, and you can find that down in the link below. We'll put that down there as well. The one that's official from Pathfinder. So not the, not the Starfinder SRD, it's the <laughs> SF SRD. So uh, Starjammer is what, the, what I typically use. And so this one actually pulls stuff from the book. It's by Paizo. So it wasn't right there. Um, I had to do a little bit of searching for it and find out what it was, what it meant. Um, but, you know, I have to pick at something, right? Um, the other thing that I would also kind of pick at would be, so those are the monsters, and this is a good and this is a bad. So the unique monsters, the one that they're going to be fighting right now, they have the combat tab right there in the, the book itself. So it's like they're here and they're fighting this, which is awesome. The ones that they use a lot um, will be like C page blah, 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 blah at the back. And so while it's nice that all the monsters that are in this scenario are in the book, that is fantastic. There's a little bit of flipping back and forth that you may have to do. So what I would suggest on that is to either one, uh, print out all those monsters in the back, or um, tab them. You know, just once you've printed it out, tab them or create tabs in the PDF if that's what you're using. That way you can, you know, just do a quick link there and you can get to where you need to go and then not have to you know, suffer flipping through stuff or whatever. Along with that, another thing that did kind of somewhat annoy me is if an individual is buying this brand new, if you look on the back, the actual synopsis of what the book is, it doesn't say that, you know, not required, but, you know, you're gonna need the Armory or the Pact Worlds book. That way the person kind of knows what they're getting into. Maybe someone isn't necessarily super into the Starfinder yet, and so they don't know to go find, you know, the SRD or something like that. So perhaps a, a product label on the back that says, you know, this book makes use of, you know, Pact Worlds and it makes use of the Armory. And if you don't have those, you can find them here. That way that the person that's buying this doesn't open it up and say, crap, I don't have that because they didn't read every little smidgen. Because I want to say that it's in the, the kind of the credits at the beginning um, and it's not really, it's not really obvious, but it's there that, you know, hey, this, is, this requires this and, but if you don't have it, you can find it here. So little nitpickies, right? Another thing that I really enjoy about this adventure path that I can't, I can't knock it, it's not even bad, is that, so each one of them comes with a map of, of like a starship or an area, and then those are broken down by, you know, A, B, C, D, etc., numbers, letters. Um, but then the book itself is actually in that order instead of some weird funky orders that I've seen in a lot of other books where it's like, you know, you have to really scroll down and look through the, the material to find exactly what's in that room. And then when you have a player that's like, oh, well, I walk into room 16, what do I see there? And you're like flipping through stuff or pulling things up on the computer. And you're like, uh, you find this. No, it is right there. So if I'm in room A, what do I see? A, you see this. It's right there together. And I really, really appreciated that a lot. Um, as a game master and as someone I'm sure the players really appreciated it too being able to come up with those descriptions Pretty immediate. I will say that when it comes to those descriptions However, they were very short and they were very brief and I had to Ablib a little bit more in some of them most of them were like a sentence or two So I would usually throw something in for a little bit of extra flavor, you know, it's Colder or damp or or something uh, they they were descriptions, but they weren't as flushed out as they could have been 
So let's talk about my final impressions of Dawn of Flame and particularly Firestarters, the very first adventure. I loved it. Like I said, I don't like adventure paths. I don't. I don't, as a GM, I don't like to be guided and my players feel railroaded. I did not feel that at all so far in this adventure. Um, we've played um, about three quarters of Firestarters so far and the players absolutely have been enjoying it even though it's their first time they haven't had an issue following the story um even the introduction to the new races and new places um hasn't been overwhelming on them and only two of them actually own a book so as long as you are a game master and you have at least some notes behind like who the lashenta are or you know what the archipelago is that you can explain off the top of your head or at least you know have handy then you shouldn't have too much of a problem it's not lore heavy that's really bogged down where they have to do a lot of research as long as you are able to provide that information quickly. The story is fascinating. Um, it hits the ground absolutely running really, really quickly and the players just loved it. And I've loved it. I thought it was absolutely exciting. As I read through it, I'm like, man, this is going to be a good time. So you can find this adventure path. Obviously, you know, you can find it at paizo.com. You can find it at your local game store. Um, they only have the first one out right now and the second one um, which is Soldiers of Brass, is actually coming out March 27th, which should be, what, like a week? Um, so I'm actually really looking forward to that, and, and hopefully I can get a copy as well. Maybe they'll send me one. Um, but with that being said, the price is about $22 for the adventure itself. So that's one levels one through three. If you if you look at it, it was about four, if I were to play, probably about four to five sessions. Um, we're already on our third session and we've gone through about one-third of the story so far. So let's say four or five sessions. So about five, four or five dollars per session um, is about what you're paying for, which honestly is not that bad for everything being done for you already and having a good story to go along with it. You can also go with a PDF version if you're a PDF fan. That's $15 and you can find that on paizo.com as well. So I absolutely suggest it. Um, there are not a lot of low-level adventure paths for Starfinder outside of the typical uh, first contact, I think it is, um, adventure, but then there's also the, the starter box, which is coming soon. So being able to bring new players into the fold of Starfinder, I think you're going to find a lot easier now between the beginner box and adventure paths that are like this that start from lower levels to kind of get people through. We're starting to get to that point where people are beginning to expand their horizons and so being able to have these lower level sets are really good for those kinds of people. It's easy for the gym to get into, it's easier for the players to get into. So with that, I say it's worth my money and I would go ahead and give it a shot. Thank you guys for checking out this review and checking out our channel as well. Uh, we hope to see you guys more often. We're going to be doing some uh, live streams every other week and our produced videos like this every other week. So weekly content, just some different stuff. We're going to continue to review, do reviews on products as they come in. We've got some more stuff from Pathfinder that's on its way. We've got um, some miniatures from a, a company that's put them together for Cthulhu, which is kind of rare. I just need to paint them so that I can give a proper review on how the paint takes them. Um, we've got other products that are over there as well. We've got some more things from Degenesis. Uh, basically, we've just got a lot of stuff that we want to share with you. And of course, it's con season, so who knows what's going to show up. So if you guys like these kind of things, hit us a like and a subscribe. And as always, we love having you here. Have a great week.